What's up y'all, my name is Kyle, the Red Hill Reseller here on YouTube and Red Hill Vintage Treasures on eBay. And today I wanted to show you how to make scannable barcodes for your inventory management, whether you're an eBay reseller, maybe you have a thrift shop, consignment store, or maybe you're just trying to figure out how to make barcodes. Um, I wanted to show y'all how to make barcodes for your reselling business. So right now we're in a blank Google Sheet document and I'm gonna zoom this in for everybody to see a little better. So we're just gonna zoom in with the web browser here. It's about 180%, that looks pretty good good to me yeah all right so uh, first off you want to think about what kind of how large you want your barcode system to be now for me I have mine go up to a billion so mine is like one zero 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 one I think and then it goes in that order from there I wanted to make it as big as it possibly can be uh, I wanted to be a very large volume seller I wanted to have a lot of items go out per day and that's why mine goes up so high you don't maybe don't have to go that extreme that's just up to you but I also do this I also put a RH in front of it mine looks something like this uh, RH is for Red Hill if you're in a consignment if you sell in consignment maybe you want to separate people's items based off of that you maybe that's something that you know you would like to do but anyway I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and Google Sheets actually has fonts within it and there's barcode fonts now as you can see in my recents I've been clicking on some of these if you scroll down past Arial, past Comic Sans, past Impact, you'll see that I got these Libra fonts here. And uh, the one I like to use the most is this Libra Extended Text, Libra 39 Extended Text. And it will now transform that text now to a barcode with now the numbers underneath it. And that's why I really like this particular font because it has the numbers underneath the thing. Uh, if you click on it and let's go to a different font, there's another barcode font like this one. There's no numbers, you don't even know what it is. So you can't see it with your eyes only with your scanner and that's why I use the uh, 39 extended text and this looks like a barcode and you would think this would scan perfectly fine well I got my barcode scanner here and I got it turned is it turned on it's turned on sorry uh, now we're gonna scan it see if it works and I kinda know it's not gonna work I'll make a sure I'm lined up on it it's, it's just not gonna work um, but to prove my barcode scanner does work I have an item here that I sold today uh, this is a Coyote University hat, um, so for $15.99 plus shipping. Uh, Coyote is actually like a tractor company, kind of like John Deere, but it's a little bit more niche. Uh, I think, I don't know much about it, but the apparel does pretty well. I will say that because I haven't had this hat very long and it sold pretty quick. Got it at Goodwill for a dollar. But anyway, to show this, to show this works, I'm about to put it away. Uh, I'm going to scan it. I'm going to make sure within frame. So you can see I got a scannable you know, barcode here. Why I want it scanned here on Google Sheets? Well, you actually got to do this weird kind of janky formula to get it to work, and but it does work. I'm going to switch everything back to normal, so we're going to go back to the 10 font size, and we're going to go back to default Arial text. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the uh, B1, so we're going to go to the column over, and B1 we're going to start putting in a function. And in this function we're going to start off with equals, and then it's going to go... Um, quotation asterisk quotation we're going to do our ampersand and sign there and then we're going to reference um, block a1 the one right next to it and then we're going to go and do another ampersand quotation asterisk quotation Google likes it no errors we're going to press enter boom still not a barcode so I don't really know what the formula does but in this base stance it seems to just put an asterisk before and after your text. I don't know what it does past that, but whenever you now click this selected and now you change the barcode or now change the font to the barcode font, which is now this, this is now a scan of a barcode. We'll make it just a little bit bigger so you can read it. Okay, now I got my barcode scanner again and now I'm gonna scan this thing on the screen. As you can see, it is scanning no problem. No video magic, no editing, too lazy for all that. This is actually scanning on the screen. So now, this is a barcode that you can now print and actually scan the thing. If you printed the other one out, uh, it will not scan. Ask me how I know, I wasted a lot of labels trying to figure it out. Uh, they, um, they do not scan, so you have to do it this way. That's what gets these things to scan. It's kind of confusing, but it does work. Now, to get rid of not having to have this whole A column here, the whole time. Well, first off, let's figure out how to do the sequential order. That's not too difficult, but let's just go. I'll show you how to do that. So, 
all we're doing here is we're just going to give Google a little bit more information. We're going to tell it that the next one we want to do is two. And I also want to tell this to drag this formula down. And that's just doing this little um, little auto function here. When you click this little bubble here and you get the little uh, cross and you drag it, it Google Sheets knows to kind of do the similar thing. If you're using these spreadsheet programs, you probably know this already. Uh, but it kind of knows what you're doing. So with this amount of data, it knows what we're doing and knows that we got this formula here. It knows that it goes down to the next one, everything, blah, blah, blah. Drag it down, let the magic happen. Boom, we got a sequential barcode system. And now if you want to print it, you'll go in here, right click the A column, and then you're going to want to go to hide column here. Does that show up for y'all? Oh wait, hang on, I'm not sure if the video showed up for y'all for that. Um. Yeah, okay, hide column, it does show up. I'm sorry, I was making sure. Hide column, now that's gone away, and now you got your barcodes that you can now print, you can mess with the font size, you can center it up however you need to do it, and once you get these printed out on whatever you print them on, then they work. Now, printing them out is a little bit of a beast on its own. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, for me, um, I'm using these uh, one by three labels that I a lot of people use for Amazon FBA. In my other barcode videos, which if you want to check out, you can check out. Um, these are the ones I typically recommend people use. You can get these pretty cheap. Um, so for that, those particular labels, I use a font size of 110. That's based off of my amount of placeholders that I have and the size barcode labels that I have. Like I said, you're gonna have to play with it, and figure it out, what works for you and how to get them you know, printed. But I will make a video on how I print them directly. But I did wanna make this to show basically how to make the barcodes, because I do get a lot of questions on just how to actually physically make them. And this is how you make them. It's free, it don't cost anything. And like I said, once you get these printed out, these will scan, the other ones will not scan. These will actually scan. So that's how you do it. I hope that helps you guys out. If you watched this far into the video, you might as well subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm kind of just starting out here on YouTube. I think uh, the dogs are going nuts. My mom's dogs are next door going nuts. Uh, I think my packages have come in. So I'm going to let y'all go. I'll see y'all in the next video. I hope this guy, I hope this helped you out. So subscribe if you haven't liked the video. Bye.